Super K Teens. I am Teacher Manu, your host and learning buddy in this episode. Today, I am very glad to take you to another fun and learning journey in our Super K Teleskuela. For this special episode, all you need to do is sit and watch as I gradually unfold all the activities which you will surely enjoy while learning. In this episode, you are expected to accomplish the following learning goals. First, identify the types and features of poetry. And of course, use literary devices and techniques to craft poetic forms. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go, teens! It's time to start your learning adventures here in Super K Telescuela. Are you now ready to accomplish your first learning task? If so, listen well as I flash on the screen the activity you need to answer. Suppose you are a poetry detective. Identify the poetry type, element, and technique that I will describe in each rhyming couplet. Write your answer on your answer sheet. Number one. I tell a story and I can be quite long. I am sometimes passed down through spoken words or songs. A. Ballad B. Sonnet C. Haiku Number 2. I am composed of 17 syllables and 3 short lines. Everyone's got a theme and nature is mine. A. Free verse B. Haiku C. Concrete poem Number three, I am a rebel, baby. I have no rules, nor rhyme and meter. I keep my cool. A, free verse. B, limerick. Or C, ballad. Number four, I am a literary device in which, with the same consonant sound, some words begin, like, he was four times a father, this fighter prince. A, assonance. B, alliteration. Or C, consonants. Number five. In my stressed syllables, I have repeating similar vowel sounds. Like I must confess that in my quest, I felt depressed and restless. A, alliteration. B, consonants. Or C, assonance. Time's up, kids. Let's now check your answers. You can check your answers against the following that I will flash on your TV screen. Did you get all five correct answers? If yes, you're doing great. If no, it's okay. It's only the first activity. On the next set of activities, you will surely hit them right. A painter can paint colorful images. Did you know that you can also create the same masterpiece without the use of paint or brush? You can paint with your words just like what poets do. Poets are also like artists because they can create images through words. The artworks of the painters are called paintings. How about the written works of the poets? Poetry is a form of an artistic expression. By filling up the pages using their words, poets ignite colorful images. Teens, do you want to create colorful images by writing a poem? I bet you do. Before you write your own poem, first, you need to know the common types of poetry and literary devices or techniques. Teens, do you know that haiku is a three-line stanza with a 575 syllable count? Let me show you an example. Rainbow, curving up, then down, meeting blue sky and green earth, blending sun and rain. Teens, notice that it has three lines. The first line has five syllables, second line has seven syllables, and the third line has three syllables again. Remember also that most haiku talk about nature, seasons, and animals. It's time to go romantic with the second type called sonnet. And this poem, How Do I Love Thee, is its example. And how is this sonnet written? Let us count the ways. First, count the number of lines in the poem. How many lines does it have? Can you also count the number of syllables in each line? How many syllables does each line have? Correct! It has 14 lines and each line has 10 syllables. 
Remember that sonnet is a 14-line poem traditionally written in iambic pentameter. It is sensationalized by William Shakespeare. The third common type of a poem is the epic. Epic is a long narrative poem that normally tells a story about a hero or an adventure. And one of the most important epic poems of old English literature is Beowulf. The fourth one is the ballad. Ballad is a type of poem that tells a story and is sometimes set to music. The main feature of a ballad is the repetition of certain lines or even the whole stanza. The fifth common type is Limerick. It is a five-line poem with a rhyme scheme of AA, BB, A. Lines 1, 2, and 5 rhyme together, while lines 3 and 4 rhyme with each other. Kindly look at this example. How many lines does this poem have? Correct! Five. And what are the words that rhyme? You're right again. The words mother, brother, and other rhyme together. And words two and through rhyme with each other. Remember that lines one, two, and five should rhyme together, and so should lines three and four. The next type of a poetic form is the calligram, also called a shape poem. In this poem, the shape and the layout of the letters and words relate to the poem's meaning. Would you like to tell me what shape this poem makes? How does this shape relate to the poem subject? Correct! This poem takes the form of an umbrella because its subject is about rain. Our next type of poem is called free verse. It is deliberately irregular, no pattern, and with non-rhyming lines. It is free of traditional rhyme, metrical, and stanza patterns. Let me show you an example of a free verse poem written by Emily Dickinson. Our last type is very familiar with you, the acrostic poem. Also called name poem, it spells out words with the first letter in each line. It describes someone or something. This is an example of an acrostic poem. Teens, were you able to take note of the details on types of poetry? If so, get your paper and pen and let's continue learning by answering this activity. In each stanza, I'll show you, identify the type of poem as acrostic, calligram or shape poem, free verse, haiku, and limerick. Time's up, Super K teens. Are you now ready with your answers? Let's see if you'll get a perfect score. What type of a poem is the one we have in the first item? Correct! It's haiku. It consists of three lines and talks about clouds and nature. What about your answer in number two? Yes, it's limerick. It's a humorous five-line poem with a rhyme scheme A-A-B-B-A. I want to know your answer in number three. Very good. Well, it's obviously an acrostic poem. And number four, you're right. No rhythm and no rhyme scheme, it's free verse. And lastly, number five, you're right again. Calligram or shape poem is the correct answer. Teens, did you get a perfect score? Congratulations, we are on the right track. Now that you have tried to immerse yourselves in the world of poetry by recognizing its different types, it's time for you to discover the ways to make your own poem stand out. When we return, we'll be talking about the literary devices and techniques in crafting poetic forms. So, stay tuned after a short break.
Welcome back, Super Katins! A while ago, you learned about the different types of poems such as haiku, limerick, shape poem, acrostic poem, and free verse. Now, in our new topic, you'll see many ways to turn your beautiful ideas into poetic forms. Are there really ways to make your poem really shine or be the best? Yes, you can use literary devices and techniques to make your poem stand out from another. Why don't we read a poem about the courageous workers risking their own lives to save yours during the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic? After reading it, let's discover some literary devices and techniques using it. You can read along if you want to. Let's do it now. An Ode to the Frontliners From the nest of a red crane in the Far East emerged a crown queen dreaded as a beast. Mounted on her prancing horse, she charged to the unwary to ravage for many months to many a country. The queen of pestilence, sinister and grim, mercilessly stalked the aged and the infirm. Lurking around, successful was she to plague men with fear of her, still unseen and vague. But will her reign of terror last forever? On the weak, should she always lay her icy finger? Until, from this darkness, a brave hero arises, ready to start to lift the shroud of crisis. Frontliners unsheathe their weapons, the vile queen bravely they will take on. Police, soldiers, vendors, nurses, doctors stand on the front line to end the horrors. Police and soldiers, the most tenacious ones, the risk so massive, each of them never shuns. As the battle rages on, they, serving as men's shield, keep peace and safety, the sword of courage they wield. Never do men feel depleted, thanks to the merchants supplying their needs in these difficult moments. Food, medicines, the vendors' arsenal in the battle. In the battle, with these, people hold their own as well. An earthly angel gifted with a mystical palm is a nurse who for the fevered brow will come. Only nurses with a menace can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, smile for the victim's comfort, and for death, cry in woe. The most gallant of them all is the doctor, truly noble, so brave, compassionate, clad in white robe, an angel. Round the clock, the pain he eases, the evil he duels. Deliver them from her, O Lord, says he in his vigils. Together, every ounce of energy they muster to end and topple humanity's novel disaster, which has hundreds inflicted and thousands blighted. On the front line, they'll hail, came her doom fated. Frontliners, in this mighty storm, heroes all you are. Your greatness and heart will forever figure in man's lore. And with gladness man you serve, just as God commands, he will uphold you with his righteous right hand. Again, based on the poem we read, who are considered heroes on the front line? Correct! They are the police, soldiers, vendors, nurses, and doctors. Now that you are exposed to a poem, it's time for you to become well-versed with different literary devices and techniques and use these devices to your advantage. Would you like to read aloud this line? To ravage for many months to many a country. Will you tell me what the repeating consonant sound is and where it is positioned? Correct, it is the sound of M and is positioned at the beginning of the words. Again, the line to ravage for many months to many a country is an example of alliteration. The repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. Will you read aloud this line? On the front line, they'll hail, came her doom fated. Is there a repeating vowel sound in this line? What is it and where is it located? You're right, it is the sound A which is found within the words. This line is an example of assonance, the repetition of vowel sounds within words. Together, 
Let's read this line. Your greatness and heart will forever figure in man's lore. What consonant sound is repeating in this line? Correct, it's the sound er. And where is it positioned? Yes, it's placed within and at the end of some words. The line we read is an example of consonants, a sound device which makes use of the repetition of consonant sounds within and at the end of the words. In the poem we read, the first line and the second line rhyme with each other, and so do the third and the fourth lines. Would you like to look at this stanza? The word palm rhymes with come, and the word toe rhymes with woe. When pairs of lines rhyme in this way, they are called rhyming couplet. Can you look for three sets of rhyming couplet in the poem? Very good! Again, the repetition of the ending sounds or words which usually appears at the end of the lines in poems is referred to as rhyme. Now, we move on to the next literary device. The poem has several examples of comparison called metaphor. Go over the poem in your module and look for the words that are compared to men's shield. Yes, police and soldiers are compared to men's shield. What about the vendor's arsenal in the battle? Yes, food and medicine are compared to the vendor's arsenal. Remember that metaphor as a literary device is the comparison of two different things without the use of like and as. The poem also uses imagery which has drawn you into a sensory experience. Imagery is simply a language that appeals to our sense of sight, touch, taste, sound, and smell. Will you identify the sense to which the phrases fevered brows and icy fingers appeal? You're right, they appeal to our sense of touch. What about the phrase, a nest of a red crane in the far east? Correct, it appeals to our sense of sight. And lastly, we have the onomatopoeia, a sound device that names a thing or an action by imitating the sound associated with it. Examples of onomatopoeia are flattering and flapping flags, and fireworks will sizzle and pop. Teens, were you able to take note all the details about the different literary devices and techniques? If so, let's move on to our next activity. In this activity, you will apply what you have learned from our discussion of the literary devices and techniques. For number one, does this line from Beowulf use alliteration or assonance? Could not scratch at his skin for that sin-stained demon? Correct! The answer is alliteration. Number two, does this line from the seven ages of man use consonance or assonance? Full of wise sauce and modern instances. Very good! The answer is consonance. What is the onomatopoeia in this phrase? The horrible shriek of pain. You're right again. The word shriek is an example of onomatopoeia. Will you identify the rhyme scheme used in this stanza? Perhaps with me, you will agree, not in war zones, true heroes you'll see. If you just try to look around, some heroic people abound. Very good. The answer is AA, BB. Wow, I am so pleased that you were able to learn effectively in this episode. To wrap up the concepts we learned today, join me in reciting this poem entitled Poetic Devices, written by your truly, Sir Manolito David. Poetic Devices Poets pen pretty poems like pets, with hope that reading no reader forgets. Poets use literary devices and technique that stylize the verses like a lady chick. Through imagery, poets paint pictures with words, like green trees perched by chirping songbirds. They subtly state a comparison to, called metaphor, now my mood is waves on the seashore, come after the roar. Adding rhyme, poets create pleasure and give beat. In onomatopoeia, they treat you to splash, chatter, or tweet. Alliteration, assonance, and consonance, euphony they provide. Just see the surf and sand, 
for sigh beside the seaside. You too can make sweet, pretty poems your pets. With hookbeat reading, no reader forgets. Use literary devices and techniques. Their blend will do the magic tricks. Did you enjoy our session today, teens? I do hope that you learned a lot from your learning adventures. Again, this is Sir Manolito David from San Carlos High School, your teacher host for today. Please tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for another learning journey with Super K Telescuela!